In 1973, a young researcher working at Xerox Park, Bob Metcalf, helped create Ethernet, the local networking technology that would become the foundation of the internet. Join us as we hear from the 2022 ACM AM Turing Award recipient, Bob Metcalf. People would say, I don't need a, a, a network, I have a diskette. I put it in my machine, I copy my file onto the diskette, I take it out and I walk down the hall and there's the printer and I put it into the printer and then it prints my document. What do I need a network for? That was called sneaker net. But pretty soon, instead of a sneaker net, you just go command P and it appears down the hall. The word ether comes from physics. Physicists once thought that there was a medium, a passive medium, that carried light from the sun to the earth. So we use the word. So this is a passive medium. We realize that in, in the future, we might choose a different. There might be telephone wires or optical fibers or radio. We wanted it to be radio, but the uh, semiconductors were not available for radio. We chose this, but we imagined there would be other media in the future. You send packets into the ether. May 22nd, 1973 is when the name Ether was given to this Ethernet. The terminology I used was in the past we had box-centric computing, with a big box in the middle and then all the people around the edge, and all the computing was done in the box. But the Ethernet was net-centric, distributed computing. So that was a big step. I ran into a guy named Dave Boggs, and he and I became inseparable twins for two years. We wrote a paper about Ethernet, and uh, Xerox wouldn't let us publish the paper be until the patents were filed. And then we had that paper published in the communications of the ACM in July 1976. But we'd been working on the paper for two years. It's a really good paper because we worked on it for two years, waiting for Xerox to patent it. So I'm very proud of that paper, and it's, uh, yeah, communications of the ACM, July 1976, and Gordon Bell, a prime mover in making Ethernet a standard, he was one of the reviewers of that paper. So he, that's where he got his taste for Ethernet. Went to Bayshore High School and left there to go to, in 1964, to go to MIT. I started out studying architecture. That lasted a week. Then I switched to math, physics, management. Then I switched to electrical engineering. There's a constant trade-off between depth and breadth. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm into breadth. It's also kind of a trick, a sleight of hand. See, all the software people think I must be really good at hardware, and all the hardware people think I must be really good at software, and both of them think I must be really good at tennis. So I was captain of the MIT tennis team, but all the, my hardware and software friends thought I must be a really good tennis player. You know, so the trick is to always be somewhere else. I went uh, to Harvard graduate school in applied math. I was advised that the next area to go into in grad school was uh, networking. And there was a networking project called ARPANET. And a lot of grad students were being funded to help build ARPANET. And I joined that group and then I proposed to Harvard to build a certain piece of hardware to connect Harvard to the ARPANET and Harvard refused. They said it was too important a project for a grad student. So I turned around and went back down Broadway to a Central uh, Kendall Square and got a job at MIT building that piece of hardware. So I did my PhD work at MIT for a PhD from Harvard. But that established me as the networking guy. And what I knew how to do better than anybody else was to send one bit at a time down a really long wire. In 1973, the Xerox Research Center, the computer science lab, led by Bob Taylor, but also Butler Lamson, Chuck Thacker, Alan Kay, decided to build the world's first personal computer. Now, the, you can argue about whether it was first or not. I don't. It was the first modern personal computer. And there was a meeting, and the meeting said, we need somebody to connect them together. Well, Bob is the networking guy. 
So I got the job. So I, that was probably the luckiest thing to ever happen to me. And so the luck was not in designing one of these. The luck, uh, the luck was getting the job because no one in the history of the world had ever had the job of connecting a building full of personal computers. One on every desk. Can you imagine that? A computer on every desk. So that was the park uh, first ethernet. It was the Gerald Tap, there it is. The uh, Manchester encoding, which you can't see and the uh, randomized retransmissions from Aloha Network. So it's the Gerald Manchester Aloha Ethernet. In 1989, a guy named Tim Berners-Lee at a physics lab in Europe called CERN came up with three protocols, HTML, HTTP, and URLs, and he called it the World Wide Web, and he put it on that apparatus, that plumbing, that 1973 plumbing-ish, and the World Wide Web took off. Now that, we'd been sitting there growing, but not like happened after the uh, World Wide Web appeared. So that was a huge surprise. Uh, we never thought of such a thing at Xerox Park. I haven't done this recently, but I check into a hotel I would go in first into the room and I would look around to see whether there was an ethernet jack there. So I'd turn to the bellman and say, I invented that. And he would put the luggage down and leave the room. <laughs> yeah, sure you did. Sure you invented that. Learn more about the 2022 ACM AM Turing Award recipient, Bob Metcalf, in the June 2023 communications of the ACM. <laughs>